are, you are, you are You are the highest priority You are, you are, you are The most important thing to me And nothing else compares No one else is even on your level You are all in all, Jesus, you are all that matters now. Oh, Jesus is the key, the only one for me. High and lifted up, the Son of God. Oh, Jesus is the key With all authority High and lifted up The Son of God Oh, you are, you are, you are The headline for all love Eternity You are, you are, you are You are the center Of everything, yeah Nothing else compares No one else is even on your level You are all in all Jesus, you are all that matters Have a good time. I'ma be up in here having some god time, and you're good on the genuine. Like yeah. illumination, illumination. You light up my life like you lit up creation. Won't let me drown, you my flotation. Won't let me thirst, cause you my hydration. Yeah. So I'ma do my dance in your arms. This love is gonna last in your arms. You're everything to me, everything I need, everything I wanna be, JC. You got me like, yeah. oh. Praise to the front. Praise to the front. 
to behind. Praise to the left. Praise to the right. Praise to the front. Praise to behind. Praise to the left. Praise to the right. Praise to the front. Praise to behind. Praise to the left. Praise to the right. Praise to the front. Praise to behind. Praise to the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. Praise to the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. To the front. To behind. To the left. To the right. You got me like. You're for me My weakness and my trouble 
Hey, welcome to FCC English Online Service. The service is about to start. Stay tuned. But before we start, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us worship the Lord in this wonderful day. We praise you, Lord, for you are worthy. Jesus, you are my praise and honor. We you praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We exalt the name of praise, Lord. We exalt the name of praise, Lord. Let us praise our God together for me.
the beginning one we've got the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name What a 
powerful name. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful declare your powerful name over the situations over every sickness and disease over every circumstance we that can overcome every sickness, that can overcome every mountains that we are facing, that can overcome every shadows that are haunting us, that can overcome the fear that has been binding us, the chains that has been holding us. We declare your name to break these chains for you, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you because your name holds such great power, such great release, such great anointing upon our life. And whenever we are fearful, we still can come to you and declare your name over the situation. Your name is holy, and right now we just exalt your name, the name of Jesus. And we want to plant this name and say this name every day. Declare the name of Jesus over every day, every situation. Lord, we thank you, we honor you, and we honor your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome back to SEC Online Service. We are so happy to see you here again. And thank you, thank you so much for joining with us. And we are so happy to see that the numbers of us viewing the service is growing more and more. Thank God for His work and thank God as well for everyone's work. Now, we would like to communicate more and to know more with you. So to connect with us, we encourage you to click on the communication link down below or you can indicate that you are a new friend among us. We welcome you and our ushers will follow up with you soon in that case. We encourage you as well to join in our cell group. Uh, we have our cell group list. All the list is shown on the ilovefcc.com website. We encourage you to click and check out which cell group is the most closest and convenient to you, most convenient to you. But of course, now we are doing mostly online cell group, so most of them will be convenient. But in case in the future when we are back to normal again or back to the new normal, then the closest locality will be the most convenient to you. So we encourage you to check it out, or you can just private message any of us or even our uh, Zone Pastor, Pastor Team, and he will guide you to which cell group that is most uh, convenient and suitable for you. Now for the next announcement, uh, we are having our Parents' Day officially on the 19th and 20th of, the, of June, that weekend, the weekend of the 19th and 20th of June. We would celebrate both Mother's Day and Father's Day together and we encourage you to join the service in order to give thanks for our family members and to remember them. We have invited a special speaker for everyone. Uh, it is Bishop John Yeo. Bishop John Yeo will be uh, giving us a sermon, a message for us that day. So really encourage you to be excited and to look forward for it. And we would like to bless our parents among us. So if your parents are living in Kind Valley, and you wish them, wish for them to receive the gift. So please uh, contact our pastor team or your cell leaders, and then we'll pass this information to the church, and the church will arrange something out for these gifts for them. So remember, 
If you have parents in Frank Valley and you wish to bless them, the church is preparing a gift for them. So we encourage you to join and also to invite your parents to join as well. Now is the time for offering. We are so happy that uh, up to now, the church has been receiving uh, steady offerings from everyone and those who are faithful in giving are still continuing to be faithful. And when we look to the world, we notice that these days there's this uh, up and down, especially down uh, in a certain kind of cryptocurrency is the investment. Some of them has earned a lot of money and some of them didn't uh, earn that much money. But we can see that when they have invested, they have made, they have made a choice to use some of their money in order to accrue more wealth for themselves. Similarly for us, when we give the, uh, our offering to the Lord, we are of course not accruing wealth, but we are investing in a certain value. And these values pay out will only be given to us when we meet the Lord. So from the beginning, remember the day that you have started giving your offering, from that day up to today and up to the future when we meet the Lord, then you will see that value is growing and growing in the kingdom of God. So be encouraged and continue to be faithful in giving. Let us give cheerfully to the Lord. Let us say this prayer together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything on heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts for the reading of the word. The scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 21. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people, because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even all those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin, the judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who will receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that, just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, followed by chapter 16, verse 4b to 15. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. 
When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Chapter 16, verse 4b. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. All right, welcome to FCC Online. And this week, I'm so excited that we're going to do something very new this week, all right? So if you are a cell leader tuning in right now, I want to encourage you to start your Zoom rooms for this sermon, all right? Gather your cell members that are tuning in together with you. Gather themselves in a Zoom room. All you need is just a free one. The 40 minutes will do, all right? Gather them in the Zoom room right now as we prepare for an exciting message this week. And for those who are visitors or you do not belong to any cell group, or if you are the only person tuning in from your cell group, it is okay. Right now, our hosts are setting up a link in the chat box. Join that link itself and we will have people there to, to minister to you as well. And why are we doing this this week is because I believe uh, uh, there is power when we share with one another our lives and we edify one another in our lives. And, and, and sermon is very limited sometimes when we just listen. But there is power when we start sharing with one another uh, regarding our current situation, our struggles. And as we pray with one another, we can see how God truly moves in, in, in the community that we are in, all right? Craig Groeschel from Life Church, he says that we are only as strong as we are honest. And I find that that statement is very true because the very moment we start admitting and we are being honest with ourselves that we have weaknesses, that is the moment we open the door for the Lord to start moving in our lives, to start molding our lives, to start changing us to be a better me. All right? So right now, sell it us. Once again, start the Zoom room. And for those tuning in, if you are cooking right now, uh, I want to encourage you to remember to add the chilies and the salt, you know? If not, later on, all of you will go for COVID testing <laughs> because you thought that the food is tasteless, all right? Now, that's just a very lame joke to buy some time. And I'm going to start right now, this week's sermon. And this week's sermon is taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 21. And the title of this week's sermon is Life Through Christ. Now, we want to go a little bit on the background of Romans, all right? And, and it is about Paul telling the church in Rome. And, and in that church, actually, that place in Rome is filled with a lot of Gentiles, Greek people. And that was the commission from Paul. And the very first few chapters in Romans is all talking about doctrine and theology. And this Romans 5, 5 12 to 21 is actually only zooming into one single Point. And I like messages like that. One point sermons are very good. Why? Because it gives us room. It gives us enough room to meditate and act upon it. 
Now in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is god brief and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And right now, I just want to invite all of us together in prayer and, and let the Lord minister to us through His Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, I just want to give you thanks for your message in Romans. I pray that God, this moment, you set our hearts right before you. You grant us the courage. You grant us the teachable spirit, God, that Lord, we will be able to, to learn from you. And if God, you want to rebuke us through this message, God, I pray you grant us the, the humility and courage to receive that rebuke. Correct us, God, and train us to live our life in righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. And this is one of the unique passages in the Bible that has comparison element. Now, when we look at comparison, usually comparison is used in two very general scenarios. The first is this, when we need to make choices between options, and we're looking at comparison as a third-person point of view. For example, we, we, we have choices to make when we want to purchase a car or a house. There are so many options that that's laid before us. Then we start comparing between the first solution and the second one. Which car is better suit for me? Or maybe in spouse, some of us have that luxury to choose as well. So that's why we have this comparison happening. The second major scenario where comparison happens is this, when we are comparing ourselves as the first person with some other standards or benchmark in hopes to grow, to assess where we can grow further or where we can improve further. And this is what coaches do when they coach players or athletes. They will always look at places where, all right, I'm comparing your Badminton, for example, I'm comparing your backhand skills with some other players' backhand skills, and you're lacking in this. So that's where we identify where we can grow. Now, the comparison used in Romans 5 is so profound because it is used for both scenarios, and we're going to look into it in detail later on, all right? But the main gist of comparison that we can see in Romans 5 is this. It's a comparison between Adam and what Adam represents in his life, and Jesus, what Jesus represents in his life. So to do that comparison, we're going to look first into Adam, then into Jesus, then we look at what choices we have to make, all right? Now, Adam in Genesis 2-7 is seen as the first man created, different from every other creation, because he is the first to be created in the image of God. Every single one of us is special from other creation because we are created in the image of God. But what is so significant about Adam is this. In Genesis 3, 6, it was the occurrence of the first sin. Now, Adam, together with Eve, partake of a fruit in the Garden of Eden that God commanded specifically not to take from. Every other fruit you can eat from, this one fruit cannot. And they took it. So that was the first record of the first sin in the Bible or in mankind. And also what happens with that sin is punishment, separation from God. Now we see in Romans 5, the very beginning, all right, death came through sin. That statement is because in Genesis 2.17, God says specifically, you shall not eat from this fruit or you will die. And this death is not talking about a physical death. It's an eternal death. The eternal death here represents an eternal separation from our Creator, an eternal separation from God. Now, I would like to just zoom in back regarding what Adam represents, the first sin. And I want to clarify two things this very message. First is this, we often look at sin as the disobedience to the rule of God, ignoring God in attitude and our action. All right? And that is what we call an active sin. But sin actually has a passive element to it, which, which I believe most of us, or myself specifically, I have always failed to repent of that part of my sin in, in my repentance prayer. Now, Sin can be passive. And what do I mean with that? Now, sin is disobedience to the rule of God. When Adam partake the first sin, the active sin, the active action 
of eating the fruit, that is an active disobedience. The action itself is an active disobedience. It's not so much because of the fruit, then that fruit has the power to give sin, no. But the action itself, disobeying God's command. But what is underlying is the nature of mankind that will sin. And that is why I talk about a passive sin. When Adam partake the fruit, suddenly he realized that being created in the image of God, we have free will. And with that free will, we are given the opportunity to disobey our Creator. Now, my, my daughter loves to eat a lot of candies until her tooth is, you know, gone case. And, and one thing I realized, and, and one thing that I regret as a father to this day, all right, was when, when she was very young, she was very obedient to us. Before she eat anything, she would take it and ask my, my permission or, or, or my wife's permission. All right, she would take it over, hey, Daddy, Mommy, can I eat this? Then we would take the right portion for her. But there was one day, I was being very cheeky, and my wife's going to kill me for this, because this has ruined her life for a long time. <laughs> one day, I was being very cheeky that, that she wanted the candy, and I knew my wife's not going to say yes, but I still gave her one. And I just did a very simple gesture. Shh, don't tell Mamiya, ah. don't tell Mamiya. Ah. From that day onwards, something unlocked in her life. She realized I could steal food without telling my parents. And she started doing that. And we trace it through the quantity of candies we have at home. We know we, how much we have given, every single one of us. And the remaining candy is definitely lesser. So I'm being a very bad dad. Please don't learn from me. <laughs> All right, I'm learning from my mistakes. I'm not doing that to Hoffel anymore. All right? But I want to come back to the main point here. The moment we realize, all right, we could have done that. We have the free will to do that. We have the free will to go against it. Then we start to allow this nature of sin from passive becoming active actions. And that is what I want to highlight. With Adam, what Adam represented was not only the original sin. It's not that because he ate the fruit, then it is inherited down all the way to us. No, it actually unlocks that opportunity, that possibility for every one of us to abuse the free will that God has given us. And that is the passive sin. And we want to deal with this in our very first question. All right, so this week, why I want you guys to hold on Zoom is because we will have two questions that I want you to discuss in your cell group, in that cell group environment. And I want us to be authentic and honest as much as we can. Again, we are only as strong as we are honest, according to Greg. And I, I want us to be honest so that tonight it's not just going to be us listening to another presentation or a, a message, but it is us being actively trying to change and trans. Be, and, and transform, be transformed by Christ to be more like Christ. We're going to take an active, active role today, all right? So that is what Adam represented. Through one man, sin came to the world, and death came through sin. So that is what's, what Adam represented, not only about his active sin, but also the possibility, the passive part of it, that free will that comes with it, all right? Now, then we look at the subsequent verses, we see that what law is, and we see the times of Moses, before even Moses, sin has come. All right, now I want to do a very short detour, what law is here for us. Law gives us clarity in three things. First, uh, clarity on what is right and wrong. Why? Because as human, we always have the tendency, the nature to argue and pervert what is right and wrong. For example, MCO, all right? MCO must meet Christ online. <laughs> but we all know what MCO really means, you know? Uh, in this moment of MCO, we always take the SOP and we always drill down all the details and find loopholes. Now, SOP is just a guideline to prevent the spread of COVID. And we all know how COVID spreads. We all know what needs to be done. But we like to find loopholes. Okay, now it says can be three passengers. I can still fetch one more. The more passengers you fetch, the higher possibility of one more person getting infected. We all know that deep down. We all know that we need to stay quarantined. We all know that we need to minimize all those 
interaction face to face, but then we as human nature like to look for loopholes. Can we do sports? Can we do this? Can we do that? How come cannot go jogging, jogging, I'm alone, I'm outside, all those and stuff like that. We always like to look at that and, and we try to change what is right and wrong. And the law is there to give us the clarity on that nature. The second is this. It is there to give us a guideline on what is truly right against what is community accepted, culturally right things. For example, law states that it is not right to double park. The police can, can give us a, a fine, a, a summon. But we like to double park. Why? Because culturally everyone is doing it. And we find what's wrong with it. There's nothing wrong. Everyone is doing it. That's the culture. And what happens if we let culture dictate what is right and wrong is that those in authority in the culture, those with influence in the culture will start to set what is right and wrong. And that is very scary. What if the person in authority is someone that likes oppression, that likes to have slaves, slavery, and that will become what is culturally right. And we know one nation has suffered for death for many years. Because those in authority, that group of elites, have used what is culturally right to set what is right for that nation. Until someone, by the grace of God, rose up and says, all right, no, this is not right. Okay? Lastly, law is there to give us a reminder of our true nature, our true sinful nature. The more law we have, the more we realize it's very hard to follow all the laws and commands, the more we realize we are weak and we need God. So those are the main reasons why we have law. So I want to go to the very first question for today. Have we actually acknowledged and accepted our sinful nature? Now to guide us answering this question, I have three very simple uh, scenarios for us to ponder upon. And I want us in, in the next 10 minutes, all right, when the timer starts, to just discuss in, in the Zoom rooms that we have if we truly have this issue. Now the first scenario is this. Do we tend to argue the rightness of a situation, even though deep down we know we are not in the right. Do, do we have that tendency, though we know that we are not in the right, but we like to argue and make sure that the whole thing turns to our direction and we, are beca we, we become right? Do we have that tendency? The second is this. Do we feel intimidated or do we feel uneasy, you know, when we are required to admit that we are sinners or weak? That it's not... Not good, you know, it's awkward to admit that I'm weak and I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm a leader, I cannot admit that I'm weak. You know, do, do we struggle with that intimidation or that uneasiness feeling? Third, do we embrace and grow through the challenges that our sinful nature presents us? Or do we run away when we are challenged? Don't talk about my habitual sin. Don't talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. That's just my sin. I want to talk about God's grace only, you know? Do we run away from that? Now, these three scenarios, I hope, will be able to guide us with the question. Once again, in the next 10 minutes, I want us to discuss, have we actually acknowledged our sinful nature?
Alright, welcome back and thank you for sharing honestly. I really believe that the Lord's starting to move in our midst as we share honestly with one another. Now the second point, after we've looked into Adam and what Adam represents, we're going to look into Christ and what Christ represents. Now Christ is the very first truly 100% obedient man that has walked on earth, obedient to God. Alright? Of course, Christ is also God Himself, but He took the, 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 the nature of man as well and he's not taking partial nature he's taking full nature of man and in that nature he has exhibited he has shown us the example of how to be truly obedient to God as a man so he's the first truly obedient man and with that comes the first true solution to sin to the problem that sin comes to the nature of sin he has presented the first true solution to it and how did he solve it? It's through the gift of grace. In Romans 5.15, we see the word gift that represents Jesus. And Jesus is the gift of grace. And what comes with this gift of grace is the eternal life. Now, we see sin as being separated from God. So this eternal life here means we are eternally with God. Now, we're going to look into Romans 5, verse 15 to 17. And here it says, But the gift is not like the trespass. Jesus is not like Adam. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin, and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ? So here it's very simple. The idea is this. Death came to Adam, the realization that we can sin out of our free will. Life came through Jesus, and that life came through Jesus is a little bit different from what came from Adam. Now, death comes even through one single sin. Every time we sin, death comes, you know? But this grace that God comes does not come for one trespass. This grace, this gift that Jesus has given us comes to all our trespasses once is needed you know so regardless of how many times we sin or what sin we have committed if we have the grace of Jesus that grace envelops all and the more we sin the more grace has because the more grace covers and that is what we talk about the gift that comes by grace but the question is for some of us who have received who have supposedly received this gift of grace do we live by grace or we, do we live as if we do not have grace? Now, a very simple example we can look is this. Let's take, for example, uh, I've committed a, uh, a big sin. No, uh, I've committed a big trespass. I've broken the law, all right? And I'm thrown into jail. And 10 years later, I came out as an ex-convict. Now, when I go home, I need to face a mental thing where I have brought shame to the family, I have brought hardship to the family, I have disappointed them, I have given them ordeals to deal with during my time and, uh, in, in the prison. Now, I would approach my home shameful, beaten, guilty, afraid. But if, let's say, my family has embraced me and says, all right, Victor, it's okay, the past is the past, Right now, we're going to look into the future. We accept you for who you are and all that you have done wrong. Now, I don't want to look at your past, all right? It's, it's already done. Nothing's going to change. I want us to, you know, be family once again. Uh, and, and all those shame, guilt, those are all forgiven, you know? Uh, all the ordeals that we've gone, we, we have accepted it and we've forgiven you, forgiven us all these ordeals. We just want a clean slate together once again. Now, after that acceptance, there will be two general responses to that. First is this, I still feel that I'm not worthy of all this love I'm receiving. I still beat myself up. 
All right, when, when there's good things, there's good food on the table, I will always let my family members take it because I feel that I'm not worthy to even partake of that good food. When they want to buy me clothes, I will reject it. When, when, when they want to shower me with love, I will reject it. That's the first scenario. The second is this, I truly accept their, their forgiveness. And when we're together, I, I do not feel that shame where I need to shy away. But I could still be myself. I could still talk to them. could still, you know, enjoy the blessings that they give us. I could still, you know, mingle with them like, like normal, you know? Now, that two response is the example that we see, how we respond to grace. Are we like the first scenario where we feel that we're not worthy? Or are we like the second scenario? Now, having this gift of grace, knowing that we have this gift of grace, we need to live by this gift of grace. And this beckons us to the second question for the day. This question is directed to those who already have the grace. The question is this, are we living by the grace of Christ? And again, there's three things to help us to understand and, and assess where we are at. First, do we constantly feel we are unworthy when we come to church or when we go to cell group or when we in life, we feel that we are constantly not worthy and, and to a point where we shy away, where we run away when blessings come. Are we like that? Second, do we constantly feel that good things are never meant for me? I'm not meant for great things. It's always going to be the leaders. Do we constantly have that mentality? Or do we truly believe that all the promises that God has for us, that God's going to give us the very best for us, do we believe in that? Or do we think that, no, the best is only for others, not for me? Thirdly, do we constantly find it hard to receive blessings when others are blessing us with, you know? When people say, all right, uh, Victor, I'm going to bless you with a car. I'm going to bless you with a phone. I'm going to bless you with a house. I'm going to bless you with a meal. Do we say, no, no, no need, no need, no need, no need. I'm the leader. I'm, I'm the one who should be, you know? Do, do we have that tendency? All right. So the second question, another 10 minutes, and this will be the final question. There's only two questions tonight. Are we living by grace?
right, today's message, the summary is this. The good news is that Christ is here to give us life and His grace triumphs over sin. Now, we started off with the idea of comparison and the two functions of comparison. And right now, I want us, honestly answering this question, when we look at the attributes or, or, or the thing that Adam represents and what Christ represents as a third point of view, third person point of view, which is better? Life of death or life through Christ? And the second comparison, I want us to answer honestly again. You know, you don't have to say this in the Zoom or if you would love to, that would be great. You know, it's this. I want us to put ourselves in the first person point of view and look at our life and look at the one that you have chosen which is bad, uh, the, the better one where our position towards it are we closer to living by grace or are we further from living by grace what is the missing link from having a life through Christ, a life lived up in His grace now right now we're going to do a very simple altar call and I would like to encourage you, if you need prayer, you're in your Zoom room. Just, if it's not convenient to tell the whole group, just directly message your leaders. Ask for prayer. And I truly believe right now the Holy Spirit is moving wherever you are, in your vicinity and in your Zoom room and in your life, in your hearts right now. I want to do a very simple three-point challenge for tonight. The first is this. If you have not received the grace of Christ at all, this is, you have not have the opportunity to invite Christ and to receive that gift of grace, I want to encourage you right now to just commit your life to start this journey with Christ, to start receiving this gift of grace from Christ and to start experiencing a life by grace. If you are such, just let your leaders or the leader of your Zoom rooms right now know that you have such requests. The second challenge is this. Do we have issue to acknowledge our sinful nature? If yes, I want to encourage us to pray and ask the Spirit to give us the strength not to run away anymore, but to acknowledge and admit and accept that we have a sinful nature, that we are not perfect, that only God is perfect and we are striving towards like Christ-like. The third challenge is this. I want us, if you have problem to acknowledge the grace of God or living in the grace of Christ, I want us not to judge ourselves anymore. Why? Because Jesus has actually pardoned us from our judgment. God has decided to send His one and only Son to die for our sins on the cross. So we need to start living through Christ. We need to start acknowledging the grace that God has given us. We need to start living that grace in our life. And if this is your struggle, you have that struggle to live and acknowledge the grace of Christ in our life, I want you to pray and, and, and seek for prayer right now and, and let Jesus minister to and set our hearts right in every single one of us right now. Thank you once again for listening. And as the music continues to minister, do pray with one another. But I just want to end this day's message with a very simple urge. I urge us, brothers and sisters in Christ, to start living through Christ.
your own home, you are from your cell leader's home, or if you are gathering as a several, let us praise, let us worship, because it is God's breath in our lungs. It is His breath, strong and powerful breath in our lungs, and this enables us to worship Him, enables us to sing. Open up your hearts. Release your worship. Open up your spiritual hearts. Release your worship. Church, let's reaffirm our faith together by reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the mighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in fulfilment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Wow. 
I hope that you get something out of this to, for today's service and also sermon. Um, before we go, we will just want to receive the blessings. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Church, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Hey, now is the end of the service. We're so glad to, you are able to join us this week. So if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do it now. If you watch it on YouTube, moreover, just move your scroll down. Yeah, the subscribe channel and help us to achieve at least a thousand subscribers, eh? So um, thank you so much for your support and we'll see you next week.